good weekend for a draw? Is it ever a good weekend for a draw? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. Orlando City drew, Arsenal drew, United drew, Chelsea drew, Chelsea drew. Dear Lord. Um, and then I watched the Coventry match today. That was a draw. Mm. In the, mm. And then Ipswich. No, Coventry wasn't a draw. It was a two-two, was it not? No, because there was a guy. The there was a guy that scored the two own goals. Oh, that was oh two. Yeah, that was a two-no. There was something else that I was watching that was a two-two today, and I was like, I just can't watch anybody win football. Nope. Absolutely, especially not us. I think it was just like programmed for every team to just draw this weekend. Like that's just what it felt like. Yeah, would have been a a good weekend to bet on some draws. You know where you can do that. Whatever Dave's gonna say. Our sponsor for today. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contest out there, including odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship. You can access the most up to the minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. You can even track your bracket real time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on the action. Remember, use our promo code BELIEVE. That's promo code B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. I'd like to apologize for what you just saw on screen before that outbreak. I promise you it will never happen again ever on this podcast. It just happened. Didn't realize what I was doing. But that's, we move. That's unacceptable from you, Don't honestly. I want to hear it. No, I appreciate you apologizing, but at the same time, that performance is unacceptable. Uh, yeah, well, so were a lot of Orlando cities at this point, so. Nice transition, Zach. Well done. Yeah, that game was, yeah, it was a game. There was football played on a pitch in Paramore on Saturday. Yes. Was there, though? Like, can we be honest? There was. There was. Was it good? No. Was it very organized? No. From us, at least? No. The, no. No. I wouldn't. Did we have say so. people dressed up as soccer or footballers out on a field kicking a ball about? Yeah. Did we have somebody that used to play in Italy playing? I couldn't tell you. Yeah, factually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me? Uh, you? I was in Italy. Yeah. It was in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. I fair. could playing, classify playing as that. in Syria. <clears throat> you know, that's another story. So probably not. But you might as well put me out there because, I mean, what difference is it going to make? <laughs> I think we should start holding open tryouts at this point. Just whoever can kick a ball in a straight line. Okay. It, to be fair, this might not be down to the players. Way too no, – I can't even say way too early. We're getting to the point where conversations do have to be had, and we saw the way that it went down last year. But at some point – we can't just be mad because people have opinions. <coughs> like, let people have their opinions. You can discuss it. Don't get mad. I'm going to go off. So if you have to No, I mean, it, it's like I was saying to you guys. It's not even like this episode isn't even about breaking down the last game. Because at this point, we have to start having the hard conversations. I don't think anybody in this room is calling for anybody's head at this moment. Not yet, no. Nope. But it's time to to start having these conversations. Like... What the actual is going on? Like, what's going on? Uh, tactically, we look inept. There is... I, you, we, were, we have the game on right now, just replaying it, so we see stuff as we go. But you were bringing up before we started, when it gets to that left side with Angulo, Santos, Lodero, when he drifts over, whoever it is, like, it's just kind of... It's there. It's the same pattern. It's recycled. There's never really a threat until... Rafael Santos gets the ball in enough space to just whip in across and pray. It's uninspiring. Also a great word to use. <coughs> it's just shit. Shit over. It's just over and over and over again. Like, the ball goes out left. It's, you said it, but, like, it's just so frustrating to watch. Yeah, there's then there's the problem of uh, – it's not really a problem, but it's asking why Kyle Smith is playing CDM. Somebody said it in our Discord. Why is half our team playing out of position right now? Like, truthfully, we have a midfielder playing right back. We have a right back playing midfield. We have a number nine playing a number 10. We have... So the right back thing, dagger day and a right back is fine. 
I, yes, I just that's why I said technically we have, but yeah, yeah. We also have a <clears throat> thing playing right center back. We have I a ten playing an eight. That. Go back ten seconds. If you want to pull up the game, you can. But at this point, we're nineteen minutes in. It's right right before the penalty. Rodrigo Schlegel, you you said the th- we have the thing. Yep. But and then he steps up, way out of position. So I didn't even catch it. Is he out of position? He might as well be because I feel like at this point his best position is a bench. I, it's a bit harsh, but I there like we've kind of jumped all over the place at the beginning of this episode. And I feel like we should kind of go step by step. But like <laughs> you see it now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen <laughs> minutes, twenty-five <laughs> seconds. Like there's just things with this team that uh, coaching high school football. You see things like what we see here. You know, like you got to fix this now, or else it's just not going to work out in the future for you. And then we see it happen at the top level. And you're just like, w-. but the, let's <sighs> be honest, it fucking ain't working for him right now because he's playing like ass. We're calling him out on it now, and it's just getting old. Like same story, same fucking problems. Is it? Yeah. I I can't even put that down to Oscar. Like at some point, <laughs> yeah, no, <it's> he's <laughs> just got to be better. Like, he, how long has he been here for? Three years? Four, four, yeah. Four, five. Four, Jesus Christ. Four going on five years. So NYCFC play, memory ain't good. playoff Jeez. was 2020, I think, right? One, well, you've, like, you've got th- Oh, no, you're right, because he had the – that was in 2020 in yep. the save. Uh-huh. Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you said, let's let's just go through this step by step. Not doesn't even – not this game. No, but just, just things everything, that are yeah. out of place. So – we talked about the roster and stuff like that, but I think it all starts with our inability to score goals. Because when you score, you force the other team. Well, continue, and then I'll go back to it. You, you force the other team to have to be more creative, Positive, though, sorry. Uh, courageous. Yeah. I, you open up spaces. You You force people to have to take chances. You know what I mean? Like, we can go up against these teams that are comfortable sitting back right now, you know. But that's not going to happen with Red Bulls. We've played how many times have they come in to explore, enter and co, whatever you want to call it, and just pressed the ever living hell out of us. Well, they did it again Saturday too. So, but we held our own better than I think most everybody thought we would, because usually it happens and then it ends up like sixty five percent possession for them, and then we just have a couple shots, like one nil, two nil, two one. Uh, I mean, that's what it was. 1-1. One, one. We scraped one out at the end. Jacqueline comes through. Yet again, that's his goal. True. But it is. You, you do have the firepower of Duncan McGuire, Facundo Torres, Luis Muriel, Nicolas Lodero, Martino Ojeda, who is a whole nother conversation. It's just like, if you have all these great players, what do you need to do to get them to work together? And then it all goes back to a certain man but he's he, he's here right now, so he's questioning what what that's like. How do you get them to work together? Not my job to figure it out. No, that's on you. Yeah, it's one man's job to figure it out. Yeah. So you were talking about how we kind of held our own. I mean, we did sixty five percent possession. Yeah, all right. So right on, right on cue. <laughs> but this is where the the concerns are. We had a point seven zero xg to their one point seven nine. We had a total of 14 shots with zero big chances created. To be fair, I think a penalty is probably like 0. 0.75, 0. 0.80 xG. They still they still have more xG than us, but it's not as big of a gap as it should have been. So, yeah, but like I said, 14 total shots, mm-hmm. zero big chances created. How many shots were on target for us? Three. That's not great. It's, yeah, it's on, it's below average, I would say. Yep, for four shots time. were blocked. <coughs> and then, yeah, but that, that comes back to not having great creativity in the final third. It's the left side. We've already been through it with the Santos, Angulo, Ludero shift. And then you try to hit a big switch or something, and it goes out for a goal kick because you mishit it. Or it's just recycled back and then recycled again. And it's – I feel like the comparisons to this team are way too much like Chelsea because every single time we do a podcast, there is something mm-hmm. – that I watch and I'm like, boom, Chelsea. Raheem fucking Sterling is Yvonne Angulo. He can get you up the pitch. 
But then the, the final product is not there at all. Mm-hmm. He likes to play on the left side is what it is. We don't have a Cole Palmer. It's supposed to be Muriel, I would say, at this point, because he's playing in a playmaking position. But it's just not happening, and it frustrates the living daylights out of me. Honestly, I thought our Cole Palmer was supposed to be Facundo. It, and it's, It should have been. Facundo's looked like a shell of himself in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, when he gets <coughs> on the ball, I can't even remember what he does. Like, he's just there at this point. And it's frustrating because, again, he had these links to Arsenal, to Ajax, to, to go play overseas for good quality teams. Now, I don't see a reason for him to leave. I don't see a reason for him to start for us yeah, right yeah. now. I but would agree. That's I think that's the hard conversations. Part of the hard conversations that we're going to have, we need to start having is, why are we wasting money on DPs? Because truthfully, at this point in time, if you can't score a single goal for us in six matches or an assist... I think he's played in four. Okay, so in four matches against a lesser quality opponent in Austin, which he may not have started, but you came in that game. Like, you are you are our DP playmaker. You should have one goal involvement so far this season. I think he, he has the penalty goal against Tigres, not in the league. Uh, have one against Cavalry? He had, he had two against yeah. Cavalry in the first match and then assist against Cavalry in the second match. So, MLS, nothing. No, he has no goal involvements in the league. I, I'm not disagreeing. But it's, yeah. it, so... And then Ojeda sitting the bench, another DP player. Just I th- who's played more minutes? Probably around the same amount. It's at this point, like you said, I I'm an Arsenal fan, and I was kind of excited to hear those links for Facundo. But then you sit down and you think about it, and it's like you sit here and watch him. I watch him week in and week out, and I watch Arsenal week in and week out, and it's like, yeah, no, he he's not he, he's not good enough. Not he's even close. Yeah, it's like the conversation. We were having it in the Discord. It's like he would never get in that team over Saka. It's like he would never get in that team over Reese Nelson. No, not even close. Like that's that's what I, like you are going there to be a third string, fourth string option. And you're getting loaned out. Yeah, you're not staying in the squad for the season. Nope. So it's and then we come and it's just he's going to stay here in the MLS. I mm-hmm. current current performances and I hope he gets better. I hope for him, but he'll be a MLS journeyman. Hopefully, stays here for a long time, but. And it's it's just so like I I don't want to say sad to see because of obviously he's got a chance to turn it around but like yeah we had some small criticisms on him earlier in his career here like you know take a shot outside the box whatever it may be but like yeah, I feel like he's regressed severely mm-hmm. especially when he's on the ball. So I got the football player versus player thing pulled up between Facundo Torres and Martino Hada. Uh, Facundo Torres, 6.6 football rating, Ojeda 6.8. Ojeda's played 100 more minutes at 392 than Facundo at 288. Uh, Facundo, four matches played, Ojeda six because international break. Both have not scored a goal. Ojeda has one assist. Facundo doesn't have an assist. Uh, Facundo's XG is 0.07. Nice. Uh, Ojeda's is 1.15. Yeah, so we've got zero goal involvements from all three of our DPs. Right. I'm sorry, one assist from Muriel, but that uh, was in that Calvary. Was Calvary. So yeah, no goal, and one goal it, involvement in and the in the MLS. Ojeda has it says yeah, Ojeda has one assist, but and that's in MLS. So. so yeah, I mean we're all three of our DPs are doing jack shit for us at the current moment, and it's not even wholly on the player. Like it's tactical. There's things that are just evident. It's not working. There's mm-hmm. not a there's a disconnect there. And that's it's just partial. It partially, it's unfortunate uh, with the whole Muriel Duncan situation. It, Duncan was gone, then he wasn't. Muriel is in. Duncan's back. Now you got to figure out how to play both of them because they're both great players in each of their own respects. But do you really have to play both of them? At this point, it looks it was a two striker system, and now Muriel has kind of dropped back as a second uh, second striker, and then we got people saying, "Oh, why is he playing the ten? Blah blah blah. And that, so now all the questions are starting to come up. But it is it's it's three DPS that are all attackers, and then Duncan. Yep. Like, why are we not kind of being smart with the DPS and saying, "Boom, attacker DP and mid"? Like, I would love a attacker DP, midfielder DP, center back DP. 
Oof. Ideally, yes. Oscar Oscar with a center back DP? No. <laughs> you want to talk about terrorist football. But okay, Robin uh Robin is a DP quality center back. Yeah, but I don't need to spend that type of money on a DP. You know what I mean? Let's keep finding these gems like hopefully Brecklo turns into, you know? Well, yeah. So center back DP, just in general, I would love because then you don't have to worry about Schlegel. Um, but I, like, why do we have all three of our DPs trying to be the main goal scorer practically? It's poor execution from the front office at that point. The whole again, whole Mario situation, unfortunate. Oh, hey, Facundo could have been something, but so the thing is, we brought in Breckelo, <coughs> oh, excuse me, to be the stand-in for Rodrigo. Like, let's be honest, when we bought Breckelo, we were all expecting him to come in, start relatively day, day pretty one. much every every damn game. Here we are. He's played two or three games. Uh, I don't, I don't know the numbers, but he started two in the league. He started two in the league. He's made an appearance and. Probably what two others maybe. That's yeah. not what we at least that's not what I was expecting coming into this season. So I just think it's unfortunate that we've had to see Rodrigo play as often as he has. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's it's convoluted and you know, with everything that we've got going on with all these people and people trying to play all in the same spaces. I mean, we put our lineups out every week, like half as a joke, but like also because I feel like some of us feel like this stuff would work, you know, if we actually think about it. And it's like, why don't we play like we we all of us almost had in the, on this week with one six. You play with two midfielders that will get wide when we have possession, but sit in when we don't have possession. And a 10 in Nico Lodero. Let him play the 10 like he was brought in with your two strikers. Like, I, I, I feel like it's not that hard. You know what I mean? And the yeah. six doesn't need to be Kyle Smith. That's the next talking point, I feel like. It doesn't need to be. Can he be there? Yes. In an emergency, sure. Like most of his positions in an emergency, yeah. But he's not the main guy. Would I rather have Felipe there? Probably, maybe. Kachevsky? I'd rather him play in a two-midfield system so it doesn't just have to be him. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the wielder. I feel like at the... Uh, preseason match that we were at against New England and we saw that start at the very beginning it was him alone I think he made a bad pass got caught out there wasn't enough uh tracking back and then we conceded like 45 seconds in Mm -hmm. so mm, playing with like one lone deep midfielder may not work out for this team because Angulo is the only I no I give credit to Lodero those two are the only two that I see tracking back but you have to make sure you're doing it every single time and it's not going to happen every single time. And then that's where you get caught out. Yeah, well, I feel, you know, hopefully Caesar's coming back healthy. And he got some minutes. Hopefully he can get to get the start here in the next two weeks. But, like, I don't know. I feel like he's good at breaking up play, finding himself in the Absolutely. right positions. His passing range may not be the best yet, but I think if we're going to play a, a single holding style six – it's going to be him, and I think he could succeed there, especially with Brecklo and Janssen back there. I think that is a, a solid look if we want to play the two-striker system. I don't think I've – have we played a game where, like, we've seen Brecklo, Cartagena, and Caesar start? Maybe once towards, like, Calvary matches. I was <laughs> going to say, like, that's what I was expecting coming into the season. I feel like that – could be a little reason why things haven't been clicking yet, right? Because we know who's prone in the back. Yeah, yeah. We know there's one against Montreal. It's Brecalo, Janssen, Araujo, Cartagena. How did that finish? That was nil-nil nil. Uh, against Montreal. Well, eh, we didn't concede. I'm just saying. <coughs> but, I like, f- go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, Finish my thought. Like, we also knew how good that midfield is. But at the same time, I don't think we've seen them for that many games. Those those three key players in my eyes. So we've had s- 10 games, 10 matches so far in this season in all comps? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I guarantee you it's 10 different lineups. In oh, all, most definitely. In every single. And th- so next talking point. That's 
why can't we establish some consistency? Like these guys get a run of games with each other. You know, I understand we were playing a lot in the early part of this season. We had a lot of matches and rotation was something that was necessary. But now we're not. It's a game a week. Yeah. So now it's the real test with that. Are we going to see a consistent 11, barring injuries, because we know that stuff you can't help. Mm. Are we going to see a consistent 11 now for the next couple of weeks? I'd like to say that we should. I'd like to say so too, but I don't believe that it's going to happen. never been a thing under Oscar. We've never consistently, until a little portion of last year, I believe, had, like, we all knew, all right, this is the 11 for today. But also, like, this year, I will say, has been kind of the the one outlier, maybe, because we've seen Brecolo potentially not be fully healthy. Caesar obviously had his injury. Enrique. Enrique's been hurt. Uh, Facundo was duty. hurt. Oh, same, That's, same yeah. shit. International, we've had international players on international duty. Uh, Caesar gets suspended. Mm-hmm. Like, we haven't been able to have our squad at full strength. Yeah, that's why I said I feel like the next couple of weeks we'll test. Like, Mm -hmm. we will see if we're going to cement an 11. Caesar is listed as questionable. I'm looking at the player status report from before this last Saturday. He was listed as questionable. Enrique is still just out. So, we are – I mean, Breckelow is not listed on any injury thing, but we're still not seeing him start or really, like, play as much as we thought he would. So, like, is the club not saying anything there? Is this another one of the, uh, you guys just got to kind of sit there and find out. Find out, out. yeah. Guys. But we should start seeing a more consistent lineup, especially when Caesar comes back. You might have to wait one or two matches just purely ooh, purely based off Caesar, because you, I don't think you can throw him straight no, back yeah, into 90 minutes I said. coming he, off the lineup. Hopefully within two weeks we get to see him in that position that Kyle Smith's playing if this is the same formation that we want to go with. Go to a four two two two. <laughs> I've been calling for it for what are we saying? Like eight years now. Um, That's fun. You get Wielder and Caesar in there. You got Mario Duncan up top. Jacqueline, <laughs> Jacqueline out left. <laughs> and then uh, say, that's that's another talking point right there. My go something that you called out earlier. The boy Jacqueline, the only one that can score right now. I'll credit him with that second goal. Foot mob and the MLS can have their own decision, but what what deflection? Uh, yeah, it was going. That was deflection off of Jacqueline's left boot. The back heel with enough spin to find its way. Damn right. The back post. He knows what he's doing. There's so much inconsistency in this team. Yeah, and that's that's the problem, and it the thing that fans of this club need to understand is everything that's fed to them via the club is fucking propaganda. Yeah, same. I was in, yeah, no, I'm not going to bring up Chelsea, but even though I just did. It, but, but it's the truth. It, it's for every club. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. club around the world. You are not going to drag yourself. So... A lot of people called it out. I think even JJ with Lions Den said something about it. It's the beat writers and the people like that. Like if you're affiliated with the club or you're credentialed by the club, you're only getting and every good stuff. Yeah, out of them. everybody knows exactly who we're talking about, and it's you have to understand it's all propaganda. The Preha perspective, propaganda. Yeah, but it's nice to be able to go there and ask him. Of questions. course, it's it's good to it's always good to interact with the the manager, but they're all softball questions that he can hit out of the park, and then the one that you asked <laughs> is mental gymnastics to not answer the question because it's propaganda. So everybody can come to their own conclusions. Do your own research. Do your own make your own decisions, and, and don't buy into the hype. We all bought into the hype from the club, from the league, you know, the outside noise. We all, the team clearly bought into their own hype. Yeah. Uh, we should be able to get actual answers. Uh, yeah, there are, like, there are certain articles, there are certain headlines that the club sends out to certain people to then push. 
So then that's what you see because those are the people that you know you can go to and trust because you know they're affiliated with the club. But then unfortunately with that connection comes, I guess you can use the word propaganda. Be as, yeah, something that's been going on in football since it's the every of club. Time. Yeah, it's every club in every corner of the world. You're not going to talk down on your own what you're, 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 the product you're putting out in the field. Yeah, and it should be journalism is journalism. You report on what is happening, and then you let people decide what they want to think on that. It shouldn't be an influence of the club right. per se. And it's just kind of unfortunate that we don't have that ability here. You know, overseas, we have Sky, we do, but we don't. Like, Sky Sports is in every single press conference across every league, and they're unbiased, unaffiliated reporters a lot of the time with all these news agencies. How many news agencies are coming to cover Orlando City? You know what I mean? Like, we've got our beat writers with, yeah, our beat writers with all the local papers. But then. is it at that point? Is it club or is it league? No, the, it's the, no, the, it's not the league. I, I, the club, it's the league, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Here in America, we don't have that. Yeah, there, the soccer journalism world here is way, 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 way smaller than literally everywhere else in the world. So it's a bit unfortunate because then you don't get as much reputation. Yep. Blah blah blah. Um, I if I could be like, I don't even need to go sit in the press box for the match. I just want to be able to go there. Ask a man a question, see if he gives me an answer. If not, oh, yeah, he dodged the question. <coughs> Don't trust it. Blah, 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 and then that's it. Yep. But never going to happen. No, because unfortunately, you know, you can't, in this small culture that's been built, you can't say things that we say here. And it just, it's across all teams, across the league. I mean, the comparison I make to it, or I will make, is like NFL Network is owned by the NFL owners, yep. you know what I mean? So it's like, do you really think you're going to get unbiased reporting from reporters that literally are, are employed by Senator Dickhead and all that? <laughs> no, that's that's a good point because then everything MLS has basically a monopoly on their own mm-hmm. media. Fox, Fox is Fox. Uh, I don't think, e- does ESPN have any games? They don't. Uh, maybe one or two. So then what rang in my head when you brought this up is the only thing that I can think of is Taylor Twelman's rant on the USMNT when we lost to Trinidad. Trinidad. Yes. That's also fair. Trinidad and Tobago. And and he actually went off and kind of just said what it was with the, the U.S. soccer culture and the organization. But you're not, you're not going to get that right now apart from – independent podcasters, organizations, media outlets that cover MLS, and it just goes back to not being big enough to get it out there. You've been silent for a little bit. No, because y'all have been taking it away, to be honest. I don't have much to contribute to this conversation. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> I'm just being straight yes. with you. No, I was going to say, so to circle it back to how are we going to get real answers from this team? You, you're not. Unless, unless us, Lions Den... Lines blog. Capo. Yeah. Uh, all, all the of, independent, all, mm-hmm. the non-affiliated ones, where you're not going to get answers. Yep. Because the report, like, I love the report, and I don't want to call them out by name. You're not going to get hard-nosed journalism from them just because they are allowed that. And if they do, oh, hey, your credential, let me have it back. Yeah. Don't come back. But that also just boils down to the club – League. Taking a step forward and allowing those questions to be asked, allowing more answers to be answered. Who says that it's not the league saying, hey, don't allow X and X or X, Y? What? Every, you know, X, Y, and X, Z, Z to be allowed yes. into this because of the way that they portray your Isn't team, it? the league, the you know, it's – Very well could be, but again, like, you don't see it anywhere else, like anywhere else in this league. So exactly, you don't see it any like I. I'll bring it back. You talk about Chelsea. You talk about Arsenal. But like um, Adam McCullough for I think it's full time Devils. Mm-hmm. Like he goes in and asks some of the hard questions. They talk uh, realistically about the club, which is just again something we don't have here. It's just the culture that we 
you know, hopefully we're trying to build. I feel like that's uh, the goal of all the independent podcasters and journalists is to build this culture up so that way we we will walk so the next generation can run. Like, Yeah, because right now it's just kind of like league's been around since 97, mm -hmm. I think it is. So 27 years. You, we have a long, long yep. way to go, and we're starting to see this wave of – creators come through in the MLS space and it's it is that first wave so yeah I really hope this does kind of set a precedent yeah no I think it I think it is and it's crossed all teams in the league everybody has their own independent content creators we're in a group on Twitter mm -hmm. with a, a ton of them and I don't think there's many of us that are affiliated in that group, oh, to be honest. Yeah. There's quite a, there's a handful. You know, I will say Charlotte has done a fantastic job with their independent media and their podcasters and stuff like that, giving them access to the club and allowing them to ask the questions and, and mm -hmm. even just join via Zoom to the, the, would be nice. the press conference. It's just... If anybody in the front office actually listens to us and, you know, just happens to get to this point, think about it. You know, we're not in there. To, we're not going to go in there and start a whole slander campaign about this Absolutely club. Not. We don't want to do harm. I don't think any of us <laughs> would do that. Like, it's the crest over everything. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, this, the badge, that's what it is. The Under Armour camo badge? Freedom. Freedom, baby. <laughs> no, it would be nice. I think there was there like we could definitely take some steps to try and make that happen. Um, so if you want to contribute, Patreon's only three bucks a month. <laughs> um, that and yeah, we would put the work in to make that happen. But we also have to know that you guys want us to make that happen because I also know that there are some people that just want to hear the good stuff and they don't want the realism about their team. Yeah, so. I mean. There's people for everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there is. We, I think we have to be one of like, one of the clubs with the most Variety. media. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You got a good amount of podcasts. So if you ever want Orlando City content, you watched ours. Oh, you got Lions Blood. Mm -hmm. You got Lions Den. You got all of them. There's quite. I mean, there's there's a ton mm -hmm. of content creators here in Orlando City. I mean, so. There's a ton of variety. You find what you like, and you can stick in your lane. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to trash anybody else for what they do. It's just, hopefully, like I was saying, we are we all are walking so the next generation can run, and the kids, my kids, can start their podcast about their club and be able to get into... OC Fan TV Gen 2. <laughs> hey, this is a generational thing. This, is be, this will be bigger than Arsenal Fan TV one day. OC Ooh. Fan TV Jr. Oh. <laughs> it's like Nick Jr. <laughs> All right. It'll be Teen Nick. Right. Teen Nick, and then just Nickelodeon. Yep, there you go. So we kind of got a little off topic there, there <laughs> but I feel like it was a good conversation to have because it is it it is a, a part of the problem, and that's just a league-wide problem. You're not wrong. Um. The other question that I have, and I'm just trying to think of the right way to phrase it. Nah, there's no wrong way. Rafael Santos uh -oh. is a liability. I, uh, I we, we need him to get back into form because we see what he can do. We need a lot of people to get back into yeah. form. Yeah. But through the first ten matches, he's he's been caught out defensively, absolutely. And we're not uh, you, we're we put a ball into the box, but it's not always the right time to do said action. So then, my answer to that is we haven't had Caesar and Wielder uh, much, but maybe what I say like once this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. So Caesar would sit back, and then you would have Janssen go out to the left, Caesar in the middle. And then we, so we wouldn't really have to worry about Santos being caught out as much. But now you just have that Kyle Smith midfield with Lodero in there sometimes. You're not going to ha have that same defensive stability. And, yes, there are times where him just individually has gotten beat by a man. I feel like 
we just didn't see that as much last season because we didn't have to as much. We were controlling matches, so we didn't really have to see him make tackles or, yeah, just make tackles pretty much. But it's being exposed now due to what squad we have put out there and who we, who we have had to rely on. Yeah, I mean, if I was an opposition coach, I mean, I know what I'm going to do to us. He's a very attacking wingback. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, it's like Chilwell. Again, everything goes back to Chelsea. Um, he's been caught out defensively this season a lot. Can he get forward? Can he whip a good ball in? Absolutely. Does he have a, like a lightning strike of a left foot? 75% of the time. But then going back, it's, mm, okay, got to have yep. someone slide over. I thought he was more like Trent, to be honest, the left-footed Trent. Uh, well, Trent's <clears> a different. Like on his day, him. Rafael Santos could be the best fullback in the league, but at his worst, he could be the worst player in the league. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I didn't know how exactly how to say it. Liability may not be the best word to describe it, but, yeah, you guys are hitting all the points there. It's on his best day, he's great, oh, but on his worst – and then it all kind of circles back around to one man. Because if this is the team that you have to field, is an attacking-minded wingback really in your best interest when you play with an inverted wingback on the opposite side? So you bring up a problem. What's the solution? The solution? Mm-hmm. My solution is a Carl Smith, Mikey Holiday type where we are playing with more of a back three rather than him getting forward. We still allow um, <clears throat> Dagger Dan to get forward, get in, inverted into the midfield, and then we start to see us work that way. Yeah. Kyle Smith left back, though? I mean, we don't really have a number two option at the left back spot. But Luca Petrasso, wow, crazy, gone. Where he? Where Gaston he Gonzalez, at? gone. Where he at? This was the, we set this problem at the yeah. beginning of the season. But again, I don't. We're not asking him to get forward and being a, an attacking left back all the time. I'm asking him to be more of a third center back, which is that's not his game. His game is get wide, whip the ball in, attacking, do his thing. Who's that, Kyle? Oh, no, sorry. I'm talking about Raphael. No, yeah. That's what okay. I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah. Kyle absolutely could tuck in and be a third center back. That's what I – my that's my solution. It may not work, but I feel like it should be something that's tried. We could start to see Nico drift into the left spaces that he enjoys to get into without it being so congested, without Santos being up there and Gulo being up there. That opens up the middle for Muriel to drop in a little bit more. So it's like the same kind of starting 11, like the same formation, two-striker look, but is Kyle Smith at left back, and then Dagger Dan can do his Yeah, as w- in right possession, side. we rotate and we do our thing, mm-hmm. but out of possession, we're going to sit in the 4-4-2 like we do. I don't mind it, but where, who's making it? Yeah, I'm not on the touchline. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> OC Fan TV manager. Oh, if we end up with an interim manager, all four of us are available on the semi-cheap side of MLS. But we all have to MLS be hired. Is. Absolutely. Oh, it's yeah, it's a package deal. Well, there's one man that's not here. That's his fault that he missed out on the conversation tonight. So he he can uh, be the physio. Dude, like everybody's getting hurt. <laughs> Every all he's so gonna he do. can he can handle the the cookouts. Uh, yeah, Sato's yeah. absolutely yeah, not. Yeah. I'm not letting him cook the grill over me, bro. So what is he but, doing? <laughs> but the thing is, like, if you do that, who's who has the whiteboard? Yeah, I gotta I gotta do my pep in the locker room before the match. I'll I'll hit up the Schlegel arm waves every now and then. <laughs> I was gonna say you can have the Chris Armas AirPods. Now we're talking. <laughs> I know I and it's you know. Stupid of us to sit here and say these things, you know, because we're not in training. We're not there to see what's going on, what people can do week in and week out. But I don't know, man. I watch a lot of football from a lot of different leagues from around the world, including, you know, lower leagues across the world. So I feel like I have a good concept of what works and what doesn't. And I feel like we have the players to do that. That's just my opinion. I was watching the Ethiopian second league last night. So, hey, (laughs) you get wrecked. 
definitely not something that I do, but I do watch. You know, I, I will watch like the Belgian league. I will watch the championship. Good player, Serie, yeah. yeah, the second leagues in Italy, USL over here, Germany. Like we watch a lot of football. Yeah, see a lot of different styles of play. A lot and of different. That I mean, that definitely doesn't qualify us for no anything. But I'm not just talking out my the ass idea is, here. Yeah. Like, I I'm just trying to. I'm not just some stupid 26 year old kid. Like, your lord. I, I, I yeah I know. Almost 30, dog. It's it's okay, getting. Chris Armas, calm down. <laughs> you told me to. I got the AirPods. Yeah, but you're not on the bench. Huh? You're not like on the. This is the right? bench right here. Where's you Schlegel? <laughs> he's Over there. Uh, brother. If you, if we <laughs> are the manager, he's not naming the team. You can go sit up yeah. in the club. You can go up to the box, buddy. Think about what you've done. <laughs> then we bring in Thomas Williams. This episode has been a bunch yeah. of waffle. Center back. It's it, it's gotten away, but it's I've, hard to keep talking about the same fucking yes. problems over and over and over and over and over again. It's been it's two years. Shit. Injuries haven't helped. I feel like that may have hindered us yeah. like severely, because you were talking about like going to a three back, but also the way we press now is a lot more relaxed than we did last year. There's been a, like a good amount of change. There's change, yeah, but the the pressure on our back line now is a little bit more intense because we're not winning the ball back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just all around not great. And I feel like in that three-back look, it gives us a little more stability back there for when we have these counter-opportunities. It also yeah. kind of gives us the ability to press a little bit more evenly. You know what I mean? You got to be able to adapt when things change, when stuff happens. And we have, technically, with the two striker look. And then you drop into a 4 4 2. But sometimes there's just got to be a little bit more tactical genius. And you got to go out and try stuff. If it doesn't work, you got to have your B plan ready to. And then give someone a note on the pitch, say we're going to this, change it up. There is no B plan. Uh, that's that's, the, pro- that's yeah. the problem. Our B plan is Schlegel waving his arms at someone oh, to go Lord. to the wrong spot. That that is what our B plan is. I think that's probably the most frustrating thing about this year is and last year too, but we go into the locker room and we come back out and it's the same thing again for another forty five minutes, like beating your head against a brick wall. Like, you're not going to break it. It's going to break you first. It's so bad. They got Bryce yelling. They got this man wanting to walk out of the fucking stadium. Yeah. It just, it's just bland. It's bland as, like, I hate, like, I never used to walk out on this club. But it's just gotten to the point, like, you, what, are, what are we doing? Change something up. Something has to change. Yeah, there's no, there's no way around it. It's, it's got to get figured out, and it's got to get figured out fast. Or, conversations are going to start to get real loud, real quick. It, was it a two-year deal? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, nope. conversations will get real loud, real quick. Not one with an option year, just straight two year. I'm pretty sure it was a two year. Conversations with Kanata. New segment. New segment. <laughs> uh, I said I'm not going to get mad this year, though, so that's why it's conversations. That's true. You can't get mad yet. Then you, oh, you got dialogue with Dave. True. Oof. We could have arguments with Arroyo. <laughs> <laughs> and we could really spice it up. Banter with Barkus or banter with Bryce. What is M? Huh? Monologuing with Miller. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to have a Miller light in his hand the whole time. That's a segment, right? There. Hey, Miller Lite. <laughs> sponsor. Your sponsor. beer's meh. All right. Well, there we just lost the sponsor right there. Uh, if you give us a sponsor, I'll say it's the best beer on the planet. <laughs> Easy money. I'll say I'll call to him. Don't fucking matter. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, You'll drink shit regardless. I, I don't know. That crap that Bryce brought to the game on Saturday in the can was not great. Oh, that was something. It wasn't horrible. Maybe that's why we're playing like trash. We got to get back to the high lives, boy. Mitch, bro- what he, happened with the game that Mitch was at? We won. No shot. That's the only game that, or, or no, we drew. That, yeah, that was nil-nil Montreal. I think. No, the game that you weren't there for, we won. So uh, I'm uh, seeing a common denominator right now. 
Yeah, we played the worst team, second worst team in the league. They won. They won this weekend. Austin? Yeah. Against? It was 2-1. I don't know. Like, does it really matter? Oh, for us right now, a win's a win. And if that means he's got to be gone, so be it. I'll sa- I'll make that sacrifice. They beat Dallas. So the third worst team in the league beat Ooh. the second worst team in the league. Oh, I didn't realize Dallas is one zero and four. They got Peter Musa though. What what's going on? <laughs> we got Luis oh, Muriel, the and then the <laughs> same shit they're talking to us about. They have they have Paul Ariola though. Mm. That'll do it. We've covered That'll do it to legal. You. Yep, there it is. Hand in hand. We have their former manager. Yep, that's also a problem. <laughs> it's wow. not really a flex, is it now? <laughs> oh, and they have Sebastian Legit. Yeah. You guys got, got anything Kyle. else for? And Jesus Ferreira. Yeah. 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 It just keeps getting worse. Pirate of the Caribbean right there. Jacqueline. Better than Jesus. Get him in the U.S. Men's National Team. Let's let's slow down you here. You twenty five. Let's slow down. I was down. gonna say, brother, 25. Hey, bro, he's twenty four. He's got to run. So, he's got to run faster than a five six okay. to be able to make the national team. Hey, I'm Jack, sorry. If you want to run your forty yard dash for us so we can time it and see what it is, let's go do it. If not, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, let's not. <laughs> let's just not. So you got to go right after him, though. No, we'll race. See who's faster. Oh, now, boy. what I will give him his shuttle time. The shuttle run time? Probably quick. Probably pretty pretty quick. Jack's got some explosiveness to him. He's just he not going to beat anybody in a race. He also has two goals on the season, not one. That's what I was going to say. The important part, he puts the ball in the back of the fucking net. So that's what matters in my eyes. Yep. You guys got anything else for? No, I think we should have just had some syrup no. with this waffle. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were good, decent talking points in there. I don't know. This show stinks. We waffle. <laughs> As as Pat McAfee says every episode, this show stinks. So we we really are glad that you listen and watch it. Yeah, it was waffle, but I feel like it was productive waffle. I feel like there's the that's the only option at this point. Productive waffle. Okay. That's some shit that needs to happen upstairs. I was gonna say we're not <laughs> we're not having production anything on the on the pitch. So let's uh, pr- be productive somewhere else. That's here. Productive waffle. Is that what we're going to coin this podcast now as just productive waffle? It's not. Sc- yeah, it's not. It's not scuffed anymore. It's productive waffle. <laughs> <laughs> we've upgraded with the new upgrades that we have hey, this year. Look we've at upgraded the boys. from a scuffed pod to productive waffling. Yeah. 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 Long ass applause. So we're just going to cut that a little early. But <laughs> next pod, I'm going to drive. When I drive up here, I'm going to go get myself a box of frozen Eggo waffles. And I'm just gonna sit here and eat waffles. Well, I find my uh, crayons. Yeah, yeah, stolen crayons. All right. Playing the music? No. No. I. You'll see what that was. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was poor. Ooh. All right. Wrap it up. Thank you all for suffering through this episode. We appreciate. You guys, make sure that you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. We won't have fan reacts for a good little while, as we only have one home game this month. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's a little behind. That's why he's celebrating. But he's got to get it. Got to get it together. Gives him a little time to get his stride back. But we will be having live streams on Thursday, hopefully this week. And then again Saturday. Yeah. We'll uh, figure that out. Either Thursday, but y'all have a fun stream. <laughs> got We got to have the Mario Kart this time. Yeah, we'll make time for that. Fantastic. I feel like that's the only option at this point. Probably. We'll play Mario Kart. You guys can hop in there and talk footy with us while we're Productive running Mario Kart. Productive waffle only. Productive waffle only. You can also find some incredibly groundbreaking news on all of our social media platforms. You can find the links for those in the description. Um, You heard it on our page first about the news today that broke. And if you didn't, then you're probably lucky. Because we gave a lot of people a heart attack today, that's for sure. Just a slight bit. Just a bit of productive (laughs) waffle. I'm going to overuse the hell out of that. That's our new slogan. Well, yeah. Anyway, if you find yourself coming back here, then go ahead and subscribe because why not? And 
Yeah. Thanks again to our sponsor of today's episode, Bet Online, where you can use your 50% welcome bonus code, believe, B L E A V. Yeah. That's uh that's about all I got for you. So we will see you Saturday on the live or Thursday on the live. <laughs>